everybody. It's Pete Carmesino here at Chaking Analytics. Thanks for joining me here on the Halftime Show on Stock Charts TV. Each and every week, we kind of go over what's happening here in the markets and uh, just trying to make heads or tails of exact trends that are developing, ones that are potentially changing, uh, ones that are moving higher, ones that are moving lower. We're trying to really read the tea leaves and see which sectors are really poised uh, to move higher or lower, ones we want to avoid as well. So we'll look at a few different lists today. You know, each week I kind of go over what's happening in the power gauge, like uh, based on our factors. We have a model, it's 20 factors, okay? And we weight each particular factor. We have four categories. They are earnings, financials, technicals, and experts. And there are five subcategories of each one of our uh, factors, right? So that makes 20 in total. And we kind of follow uh, the lead of the indicators, right? To produce obviously the rating. So the overall rating is produced by the 20 underlying factors. And then we have the ability to kind of watch which factors are moving. And so this week, we're gonna look at some factor movers, all right, underneath uh, the hood. We've got uh, a few short interest gainers. Um, and we have uh, the opposite, a few short interest losers. In other words, they're losing short interest um, and gaining short interest, one or the other, right? So depending upon how that reads. And really, those are the only two categories that have changed this week. It's kind of odd. And we'll look at some other ones too, some of the hot lists that we have going on. Uh, but let's look at just the overall sentiment right now. I mean, the markets are down. We started off pretty nicely overnight with an anticipatory move higher here in the markets. But right now we're just seeing a pullback in general. And if I'm looking at just some general news here, uh, I might pick on um, today on, on a few stocks that uh, a company, you know, these uh, investment banks have upgraded. And we're going to look at how they kind of fare on the power gauge system itself and not so much just the gauge. We're going to look at the technicals that we build as well. And I've got just a couple names that we'll pick on today and kind of look at C what the analysts are seeing versus what our charts are saying and even our own model is saying as well. So let's take a look and dive in and get this uh, halftime show underway. All right, let's just first jump into a chart that um, I've been really building since uh, December of 2021. So it's getting a little long in tooth, but it seems to be playing out. Um, and so we'll just see what's happening here. I've been counting the rallies and trying to find at least a minimum of 5% move uh, from the bottom to a, a topping formation and then a rollover. This is a weekly chart and all I did was build the S&P, uh, the NASDAQ composite and um, the bullish percent on the New York composite as well. So the top one is the New York, the middle one is the NASDAQ composite, the bottom was the S&P 500. So I'm trying to comparing these rallies to the bullish percent moves. And so we can see it, it definitely the continuation of you know, when, once the bullish percent starts to get negative on all the indexes, it happens a lot uh, simultaneously, we start to see those rallies fizzle, right? Now, we haven't seen that yet, even though rally six is looking like uh, the most sideways rally uh, out of all of them. If you really look, then when the rallies had ended, they had abruptly gone down um, almost every single one of them, except for this one. So potentially, I'm not saying it's over, but we are seeing uh, two higher lows in a row here um, and trying to really hold that. So what's interesting is that bullish percent on all of these, the gray is positive, obviously. Um, it's kind of like a dark green, it's really hard to see. But the only one that started a negative one this week is the NASDAQ composite. So I'm not saying that's a, a predictor. If I look back. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, the NASDAQ was ahead. It might have been ahead on the downtrend here after rally four last time. So let's just see how that plays out. Something to bit pay attention to. I thought I'd call it out, but let's just look at the NASDAQ in general. Now, this is on a weekly chart. You know, I'm using some moving averages here, your standard ones, 200, 100. But the one that I kind of mess around with, with the, on the red is the uh, 55 EMA. All right. And it hasn't cracked underneath the longer term 200, not yet, but um, it has obviously found some support here. And if you look at it, the index versus the SPY, it has broken down. And so you've got mixed signals, just why we're getting this sideways action. The markets are kind of just, you know, looking for any kind of new 
uh, direction, see what's going on. Um, let's look at some energy sector uh, or this energy sector ETF. It's really been stuck in neutral, so to speak, moving sideways, having its days of, of lower levels and then moving and rebounding higher to higher recent highs, but really nothing from a breakout. Now, I got to really squeeze this thing really tight to see the XLE versus the SPY and I do see a negative crossover here somewhere around the uh, week of April 20th. And uh, other than that, I mean, I, I have to call this sideways. If I, if I elongate this chart a little bit, um, you can see this is the XLE relative to the SPY. But that sector is holding up. Now, you look at the different picture here. We'll look at XLF real quick. And same aspect. Uh, it's clearly identifying a, a downward trend. And it's really been in a downward trend for quite some time. It, and it's ben beneath that downtrending line one more time. But again, overall, the sector has had a pretty bad day. Obviously, you start getting regional banks having issues and all that kind of stuff. You're going to get a sell-off. But at the same time, the rebound is, uh, I'd say, impressive, but yet not impressive enough to make a real change in the overall trend versus the, versus the SPY. The other one is obviously the tech sector. We'll look at that one. Um, obviously, that's been in, a, in a, it had a tailwind to it when rates, the implied rates are coming down or rates are going to look at moving uh, not higher anymore or stopping inflating and whatever, however you want to define that. Um, that's a tailwind for interest rates. So as inflation sort of doesn't deflate, but it's disinflating, meaning it's not growing or inflating as high as it was, so goes the potential rate rises will slow as well. And that's really been a bit of a tailwind here. Let's look at industrials really quick, and then we'll look at some of those names we were talking about, the factor movers. Um, this is sideways as well, but on an uptrend from, this, from the moving average standpoint. And really uh, here in the relative nature to from XLI to the SPY, you see the same setup, except for the fact that it's really weakened here You know, in the last several uh, weeks, if not almost a month and a half at this point from March 8th, uh, we've seen a breakdown. So you are seeing a little bit slow because that might coincide with a recession or a hard landing or whatever the case may be. Uh, but you are seeing that reflect in these uh, specific sector of, of the XLI. All right, let's just look at a few stocks that are sort of in the news. Um, folks pointing out NVIDIA, uh, some investment banks as sort of the leading tech name in AI. Certainly we agree, but at these levels, um, it's, it's a bit of a stretch, right? I mean, obviously it's moved from the 140 range up to almost 280 at one point, if not higher. I think it traded as high as 281. And obviously earnings have been great. A bit of a mixed bag here on the earnings sector, but we see where our bullish rating had really changed after the last earnings report here. Next one's coming up in May. And that was around 208. Still had a big move of another 70 some odd points. Um, and yet, when the gauge was changing, um, it was a little late in the run. The relative strength was ahead. And so we don't disagree with this. If I look at a longer term chart, five year, it's getting into the more lofty area. And if you look at financials, it's probably going to be weighed down by price to sales and price to book. So it's a little rich when you look at certain factors, but overall, obviously one of the bigger gainers. Um, here's another one that people were talking about today. Another upgrade came on this name. I don't know what they do. I'm not a big biotech fan, obviously, because a lot of things can go uh, wrong. It's not really a, a very large company, only 890 million in market cap, almost just four or $5 million in real revenue. But we know that a lot of pipeline driven and you know, potential is built into these biotech names. But here's a name that spiked on the news, right? It's overbought, negative relative strength. It is a strong stock in a strong industry, but you're looking at a very, I would say from a fundamental standpoint, uh, a very small, you can almost argue micro cap name uh, at these levels. So don't follow everything until you look under the hood, see what's happening, take a look at the power gauge. I just wanted to call that out because I see these things popping on big news but you know, rolling over pretty quickly uh, after hitting a high today of uh, who knows, it looks like uh, as high as almost $20, 1996 on today's action. And you can look at the one day chart on our system. 
that obviously a bit of a gap higher, but, um, and just been rolling over ever since. So just be careful when you see these upgrades come out. Okay, I said I'd pull up this list of factor movers and I wanna make sure you understand something. If I hover over this area, you could see the definition of this. So a short interest gainer are basically bullish changes in our short interest factor, meaning that the factor got more bullish due to a decline in short interest. So just wrap your head around that before you look at this. So when I'm looking at some of these names, you see EVCM, Ever Commerce, a software name, so what you're seeing is a potential short squeeze, potentially, I'm not sure exactly, but again, uh, you know, a decent sized company, 2 billion, I'd say definitely a small cap, uh, mixed uh, bag here on, on the power gauge, you got financials and technicals, pretty neutral. Experts are really way ahead. And if I open this up, you can see the short interest has really moved to the very bullish, meaning there are less shorts. Could be a short covering, but it looks like it hit resistance here right around that $13 level. Uh, just thought I'd call it out. Here's another one. Uh, that's out there in the same setup, but not really a good looking chart at all. Suncor oil name, experts are very bearish, but you can see short interest got a little bit better. Not sure exactly what that means if they're closing the trades out or whatever the case may be, but this particular one is still looking pretty weak. And uh, maybe the shorts just uh, were in this long enough and you know decided to take some profits. I'm not exactly sure, but the chart's just not reflective of a good looking name at all. Now here's Advantex. I don't know this company at all, um, AVTA. If you look at it, it's basically a wealth management firm. Uh, it's in the capital markets industry. Here's a name that's really been struggling to continue the trend. After this breakdown we had here in March with a lot of banking issues and all of that, the financials in general, you start to see short interest wane a little bit here, meaning that obviously got more bullish, but really into resistance and rolling over again with a relative strength fighting itself back and forth here, a bit of a battle. Not a clear picture yet, but it looks like the trend is identifiably lower. I think this list is a little more interesting because this is the list that shows the increase in short interest, okay? So meaning that the short interest factor got more bearish. So when you start to see names that are bullish, right? and this particular factor change, you might start to ask some questions about what's happening. Here's healthcare technology. Um, let's look at PODD, which uh, is another healthcare equipment name. You know, these aren't typical names that you would think someone would be betting against, but when you start to see the experts here, you see the short interest here and insider activity sort of matching up in a bearish setup, you know, you get a little concern. You start to look at a uh, American Equity as an insurance provider. They do a lot of annuity type business as well. That's also in the wealth management business, and, you know, so to speak, from an insurance standpoint anyway. And here's a name that's broken down and obviously getting weaker. Relative strength is uh, certainly pointing lower. And another name here at EXPE. Now, this name is, you would I think, is identify as, as something doing better with all the travel that's happening. But short interest is increasing. Insiders are also matched up as well. The downtrend looks like it's continuing here. And one other one is, uh, the this is uh, obviously TripAdvisor in the same business happening as well. And we'll just look at uh, this particular one. Kennedy Wilson is a real estate management company. That sector has been under a lot of pressure. And really the other names here uh, are some names you can look up, but these are names that are obviously increasing, getting uh, short interest increasing on them. All right, folks, that's all we have for this week. Again, I'm Pete Carmasino at Chaikin Analytics. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next week on the Halftime Show.